this week on Strong Arm Sports Podcast. T-Mac's career was riddled with injuries that limited him and kept him from being the star I believe he was destined to be. T-Mac, 18-381. Oh my gosh, Joe Johnson, 19-945, bro. 19,945 points. What is going on, folks? Welcome to a brand new, exciting episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast. I mean, just only the really sport podcast in all of that's all. That's all we are. True. Just happens to be the first time you guys are watching or listening to the show. I'm one half for the show. I go by the name of K Spade, the prospect. And I'm your boy, LaParis57, and together we form Strong Arm Sports Spade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, man, oh, I was we got an action packed show for these guys today, babe. Let me tell you something. You're going over the no, list. It ain't no NFL. It, and wait, it's barely any NBA. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. We got NFL on the list. A little something. Oh, okay. We're talking about this. We got yeah. NFL on the list. But let me, let me just say this, babe. We was going over the list, and something happened today. Oh, I was like, hold on, hold on. We got to add that, too. So we, we got a jam packed show for you guys. There's no need to prolong this fade. Let's jump right into it. And we're going to start it, in the NBA. This topic right. right here, let me tell you guys, ladies and gentlemen, this topic right here had my homie Spade in his bag. He was right. in his bag. So that's what I want to start. Let's start in the NBA. You good right. with that? Yeah, let's get it, bro. Got to take it out to Golden State. Now, I, if you guys if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, it's at Authentic973. I tweeted early in the week. I said, man, these these um, sports media outlets, they only talking about five topics. It's the Warriors, it's the Cavs, it's the Balls, it's Kaepernick, and what else I said? The MVP race? It was something else I added. But they only yep. talking about five MVP topics. MVP race. Yep. They only talking about five topics. That's why we're here. <laughs> That's why we're here. That's right. Leave it to us. Now, this topic about right here. Of it. Yeah. This topic right here is about the Warriors. But not necessarily right. the Warriors. It's more, more so about Draymond Green versus James Harden. Now, I know I've been James Harden talk on this show. We're going to lift the band. We, we're going to lift the band for this topic right here. Spade, if you, guys, if you guys didn't watch the game, Rockets played the Warriors. Dr- um, Draymond Green and James Harden had a little situation, I call it. I guess James mm-hmm. Harden pinched his stomach or his jersey. It didn't even look like he pinched his stomach to me. It looked more so like he got jersey. But Draymond Green didn't like that, Spade, and he punched James Harden in the wrist after the game. Draymond definitely said, he said he pinched me. He said, yeah, I definitely was trying to punch him in his wrist. Spade, yeah. how do you feel about Draymond Green getting at your boy? Well, let me let me stretch. Let me. We're going to start the show off right. So here's the thing, man. Everybody knows I'm a James Harden fan, so it didn't take long for this stuff to hit my timeline. And people were saying <laughs> it was dirty. And, you know, Draymond Green was dirty for trying to hit him on his wrist. And I actually somewhat defended Draymond Green. I didn't defend the action, but I don't think it's dirty. And that, that's what I said on Twitter. I said, I don't think it's dirty. Okay. However... I'm just from the old school, somebody on that team, somebody on Houston, maybe the 12th man on the roster, maybe the 13th man on the roster. You got the star of your team in James Harden. Hands down, the biggest contributing reason for this team to be third in the West right now. Hands down. You got them being a top two MVP candidate of this regular season. True. You cannot, and the man is is obviously playing through injury. It's well documented. Everybody knows he has an issue with his wrist. It happens to be his shooting wrist. Okay. You can't have people on the other team striking your guy on the wrist. Now, if I wanted to be technical, I don't have an NBA rule book in front of me, but I think a closed fist hit is against something in the damn rule book. I'm sure of it. Don't get an attitude with me, Golden State fans. I didn't write the damn rule book. I'm old, but I ain't that damn old. I didn't mm-hmm. write the rule book. And even though there's been revisions along the way, I assure you, I didn't write any of them. A closed fist strike is against something. It's a foul. It's, a, it's whatever. But I'm not even mad that it wasn't a flagrant. Everybody was saying he should have been ejected. No, I'm cool with him not being ejected. That would have been letting him off light. I want somebody on that team to throw an elbow at him and clean his ass up. That's what you got to do. I was talking about this in an in uh, Xbox Live party with some friends. 
I think this was, was 2012 or 2013. Playoffs. Pacers, Heat. LeBron James was being taunted from the Pacers bench. And at the time, a young, not well known about Lance Stevenson was doing the choke thing to LeBron mm -hmm. James. He didn't put his hands on LeBron James. He was taunting him from the bench. The Heat had a really big lead in the game in that series. The game was decided. The Pacers put some scrubs in. Lance Stevenson would be one of those scrubs. <laughs> Miami said, here's the perfect time. They put in, and I forgot his name again. What's it? Dexter Pittman. They put yeah. in Dexter Pittman, who I had never seen on the court. I'd never seen this guy on the court at all. They put Dexter Pittman in, waited for the perfect time. Lance Stevenson was on his way to the basket for a rebound. Dexter saw him out the corner as I put his elbow out, leaned in, and D. Destroyed Lance Stevenson. Know what it did? Sent a message. Yeah, Dexter Pittman got got a flagrant foul. Probably got fined. Probably got all kind of stuff. If he got fined, I guarantee you somebody on the team reimbursed him. If I'm LeBron, I reimburse it myself. You got to send a message. I don't feel like these teams today send a message. You got people knocking Russell Westbrook down and standing over his, his limp body. Ain't nobody doing that to him. You got people mm -hmm. hitting James Harden on his injured shooting wrist. Ain't nobody doing that to him. I just feel mm -hmm. like it's a little too soft in the league. I'm not upset with the officials. I'm upset with the teammates of these star players who are afraid to get a tech or a whistle blown at them or maybe even a fine to defend their teammates. That's what I'm sick of. Oh, I, I, Spade, I'm shocked. Yeah. I wasn't expecting you to go that route. Yeah, man. I wasn't expecting you to go that route, but I, I'm going to have to agree with you. The whole league is soft. Like, back. I hate to be that back in my day guy, but back in my day, Tell them no. people tried to get at Mike Jordan, it was dudes like Charles Oakley and Scott Williams. Them dudes yep. did not play no, Stacey King, those type of dudes did not play no games. You think you yep. was just about to go in Detroit and just push Isaiah Thomas around with guys Hell like no. Bill Lambert? Rick Hell Mahorn no. right now is still known as a goon for what he did in Detroit. Rick yep. Mahorn. Like, yep. you think you're about to just go, even, Spade, I told you, I, I, I'm i not a Heat fan, and I'm definitely not a Nick fan, but I always liked watching those games back in the day. You want to know why? Because it Cause always they, was a fight. It was a always. fight. Yep. Them dudes did not play. And Big Anthony Mason then went down to Miami, and, man, let me tell you something. Van Gundy was on morning feet, and morning was kicking up. Man, it, them it dudes like, did not play no games. The league right known, now is definitely bro. soft. It was that known. That, that's it, yeah, that's definitely, the thing. Definitely. It was a known fact. If you put was, your hands on this guy, it would be consequences. Word. And it's Word. not known and, and anymore. That that was some of the reason that the Bulls went out. Because Detroit was putting hands on Jordan. Tell that them. was some of the reason they went out and got those type of guys. Like, You're okay, absolutely right, bro. You touch my guy, we going to touch two of yours. And that's why the Bulls got those guys. Not because they were some amazing players they got them because they were enforcers and that's exactly. what the league don't have anymore no enforcers if if you let somebody would have hit mj or isaiah thomas or larry bird larry bird too because uh if you think he was about to just <laughs> tee off on larry bird and think mikhail and robert parish and those dudes wasn't just wasn't coming to please right. it wasn't happening man yep. it wasn't happening yep but as far as far as the draymond green hard thing listen man Drake, I, I don't. Th I think Draymond overreacted. He just Draymond talking about some. Oh yeah, but he pinched me. Draymond, you were known for kicking folks. Right. Like you can't be like, oh my gosh, he pinched me when you in the league kicking people in the private part in the head. I think he kicked James Harden in the head one time. In the face. Like he kicked close. James Harden in the face. Yeah. Like come on, man. Like Draymond, uh, typical Draymond. I think he overreacted. <laughs> if he pinched you, I mean, you could have pushed him. Why you? You you intentionally went for that man hurt wrist and, and admit I, it. I said this to you, yeah I said this to you off camera. A, a lot of these dudes, you you I don't want to say you gotta like each other. You don't gotta you know be buddy buddy with these dudes at all. Mm -hmm. But you guys are in a fraternity. You should you know James Harden got a hurt wrist. You shouldn't intentionally try and hurt that man wrist, man. Right. That that that's some sucker shit to me, man. I. I didn't like that. It was a you could do a a uh, hundred other things to James Harden. Why did you try to hit his wrist? I, right. I didn't like that. You you know, Golden State. It's no secret I'm not a Golden State fan. That's well documented. 
I give these guys credit for being a great team. Hell of a great team, team though, they got even better. Hell yeah, of a I was going to say, I definitely give them their credit for being a great team. Uh, yeah. One of the most exciting teams to watch. But their fans, they get on my nerves, bro. In some of the same way you say about Boston fans. Golden State fans yeah. get on my nerves. So I yeah. put on Twitter, I don't think it was a dirty play. That's how I started the damn tweet. I don't think it was a dirty play, but I think somebody on the Rockets team should have sent a message that it ain't okay to hit our star to hit our MVP. Of course, I get bombarded with just nonsense from Golden State fans. Here's my favorite, bro. Somebody said, so it's okay for James Harden to pinch him? I'm like, we're talking about pinch? Bro, I got pinched in kindergarten. This man, damn near seven foot tall, 260 pounds, and what well, we supposed to... Weep about a pinch. If you don't think these players get poked, scratched, pinched, and prodded right. on in the four quarters, some of it accidental, some of it intentional. I know when I played one of my favorite things, if I was getting beat, if I'm guarding somebody faster than me and they was getting beat, I would try to shove my knee into the side of their leg. Not obviously. I wouldn't kick the hell out of them like Draymond. I would just give them that little knee. Everybody who played got a little bit of got something they do so if he was grabbing his jersey and if he was giving him a pinch or whatever i'm not denying it but i mean if you're gonna say pinching my stomach that gives me the green light to close my fist and bang you on your injured shooting wrist like get the hell out of here just get the entire hell out of here this another guy hit me up and said he's lucky he only got hit on the wrist Michael Jordan would have swung on him. First of all, I don't know what the hell Michael Jordan you've been watching, bro. You probably 12. I hate when people who never saw MJ play tell me what MJ would have done. MJ was more about psychological warfare, not physical warfare. MJ wasn't just going around the league fighting people. Matter of fact, like LaParis alluded to, young MJ used to get his ass kicked. That's why he went to weightlifting like he did and weight training in the offseason to bulk up and get stronger. If he was the guy you painted him to be, he just would have fought everybody. So shut up. You don't even know what you're talking about. And I'll be quiet, bro. I was getting so much ignorant shit in my... It was just crazy, man. Crazy. My last point is, man, between them lines, a lot of things happen, man. A lot. I'm a football guy. If you think it ain't pitching, scratching, spitting in them pals, when them dudes be piling up all type of crap, especially on like a fumble... And it be them pals. If you if you don't think it's pinching, scratching, poking, poking in the eyes, all type of weird crap going on in them pals, then you clearly one ain't play sports or clearly not watching close enough. Cause this crap happens all the time. All the time. I think Draymond overreacted. Like I said, I don't think it should have been. I don't, I don't know if it's gonna be a fine. I don't think he should have got ejected or anything like that. I'm nah. just saying. I think he overreacted. He pinched you. You could have pushed him or anything. I definitely agree with you though, Spade. I do think the league. Is a hundred percent, a hundred percent more soft than it used to be. Yeah, man. Because I, you know, the Rockets got a dude. The Rockets got a dude that's kind of a goon. And how Montreal, Montreal Harrow, I think right. his name is right. Montreal Harrow. That dude was in the D League fighting. He had a fight in the D League. Yeah. But I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't think he played that game. But I'm just saying, somebody. If this was back in my day, that crap would not have got to send a message, Rockets. Y'all too soft. Stop letting people hit your stars. OKC, stop letting right. people hit your stars. Knock them to the ground right. and stand over them. But anyway, bro, you right. ready to move forward, man? Let's move on, man. That's how, that's how you start the show, That's bro. how you start the show. And we're going to keep it rolling like this. <laughs> in case you guys didn't know, man, we got some names that was recently inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame. Uh, basketball, let me say that. Basketball, Naismith Hall of Fame. We got Tracy McGrady. I ain't got to tell you nothing about T-Mac. We know about him. We got ex yeah. UConn legend Rebecca Lobo. And we got Coach Bill Self. Now, what? congratulations to all three of these folks, but y'all know us. I don't really want to talk Bill Self. I don't really want to talk Rebecca Lobo. I want to talk T-Mac. T-Mac, at one point in time, I was just having this conversation with somebody. When T-Mac was in Orlando, a lot of people really, I'm not going to say a lot, but some people stopped tuning in because this was the post-Michael Jordan era. And I know people to this day to tell me, well, I don't really watch basketball after Michael Jordan retired because none of these guys are good, which is in incredibly disrespectful to the guys that are still playing. Is it another Michael Jordan out there on the court? No, but that don't mean that these aren't talented athletes out there. But anyway, wow. when T-Mac was in Orlando, I just so happened to be watching the game. Never been a huge Orlando fan. Never been a, a huge T-Mac fan. I'm not sure why I was tuned in, but I was tuned in. I picked up the phone. I called my homeboy Nate, and I said, bro, T-Mac can score 
every time he wants to. Like I'm watching the game and it's the light bulb just came out. It was the first time I realized that T-Mac really could do whatever he wanted to do. To me, at that point, he was at the prime. He was the best player in the league. Make sure I say that, bro. He was the best player in the league. However, mm. T-Mac's career was riddled with injuries that limited him and kept him from being the star I believe he was destined to be. Uh, he didn't have a lot of success in the postseason, and because as he continued to try to fight and stay in the league, it was unhealthy seasons, he ended up ending his career with some eh, numbers. So now you got to look at this thing. I got a tab pulled up right here. T-Mac ended his career averaging 19.6 points a game. 5.6 rebounds, 4.4 assists. Now, letting T-Mac in, regardless of how great he is, his greatness was for such a short spell of his career. It's a lot of other players on the cusp averaging 19, 20 points a game for their career. And I, I got to put you on the hot seat, LaParis. Should T-Mac have gotten in, bro? In your opinion. Hey, I was, I was on board. I was on board. For T Mac being a Hall of Famer. Until you said one of our homies said, if you let in T Mac, you gotta let in Joe Johnson. I said, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. If you let T Mac in, we gotta let in Joe Johnson. So the, so basically they're saying that Joe Johnson and T Mac numbers are similar. Pretty similar. They in the same range. Pretty similar. And I'm like, hold up. Spade. I said, hold up. I'm sorry, T-Mac, but we can't let Joe Johnson in. So, if T-Mac getting in, we got to let in Joe Johnson, I want to say no. I was on board for T-Mac being a Hall of Famer, Spade, but I didn't look up Joe Johnson numbers while we sitting here talking, but if you if you telling me, if you're telling me, Spade, that we got to, that because T-Mac is a Hall of Famer, Joe Johnson got to be one, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Well, I'm out. I mean, I'm out. <laughs> in all fairness, I'm out, Spade. T Mac averaged Spade. 19, 20 I'm a out. game. Joe Johnson averaged 17, 17, 18 points a game. So it's a couple of point difference there. The difference I'm, is. Spade, that's one point. Yeah. That's one, two points. Yeah, no, that's why I said a couple points there. <laughs> the difference is if you look at the totality of what Joe Johnson was able to do from 01 to current, who is still out there hooping, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. T Mac's. His peaks were certainly higher than Joe Johnson's peaks. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Spade, let me let me. I want to talk. I want to talk about Re Rebecca Lobo. You you pulled up some stats earlier. Yeah. You ain't want to speak on it. Yeah, no, I got to talk about. You, it. you know, she you said you said she was less than stellar in the WNBA. Yes, one All Star appearance. But you know that was in nineteen. She was amazing in college. Yeah, very much. So. She was amazing in college. Mm -hmm. She was amazing uh, for the US, USA team. Well, USA team. I don't know if amazing is the word. Didn't they want to go medal? I think they want to go they medal, did, bro. But her playing time in that in that uh, USA run was actually limited. She only averaged six point okay. eight points a game during that. That okay? Yeah, so seven seven points a game. So you know, if, so yeah. Shout out to Mississippi State. They beat UConn. Huh? They beat you. They beat UConn. UConn be speaking on the UConn player. UConn just Why lost. Don't take a stab at UConn 100. like that. That's this. Oh, I mean that hundred game, hundred plus game win streak. Mississippi State won. But anyway, Spade. I think I think you know is. I guess it's a little different for women, and and that's fine because you know the WNBA it don't get watched as much. But it's definitely. I mean, Cheryl Swoops was putting up crazy numbers. Cynthia Cooper and those type of females. But was collegiately, going, though, Damn. make sure. I mean, in college, Rebecca was getting it in, bro. Oh yeah, she was. She was she getting was it in. It. I don't have a problem. I don't have a, a problem with Rebecca Lobo being, being a Hall of Famer. But if you telling me T Mac is in, so we got to put Joe Johnson in spade. I'm out on T Mac. I'm and sorry. See, I don't. T Mac. I don't mean to slander you. I love T Mac. Before they told me. Joe Johnson was on your heels. I was like, hold up. I'm what? trying to find. I need to see how many total points Joe Johnson has scored. So, man, you telling me Joe Johnson a Hall of Fame? No, I'm not. And I'm, I would like to find. I'm trying to find it on the fly right now, man. I want to know how many points he's scored in his career. T-Mac is just over 18,000 points. 
And uh, I'm pretty sure Joe is is probably in that range or higher. Wet kill. No way. No Listen, way. I'm gonna tell you what kills T Mac. T Mac had a he had he had about let me let me get it right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Hold eight. Up. He had about eight years, eight to nine years of him averaging close to 20 or right above 20 a game. He also had years of averaging three points a game, five points a game, eight points a game. So that's what we got to find it. We got to find it. We got to see hold how up, many points Joe Johnson I, I, I got to look it up. No way. No way. He got to no be close. Way. Got to be close. Oh, my gosh, bro. How many points C-Mac got, bro? 18. Bro, I got it right here. How many How many points do T-Mac got, bro? Hold on. I got you. Because I got uh, Joe Johnson's eight. right here. T-Mac, 18, 381. Oh, my gosh. Joe Johnson, 19, 945, Told bro. 19,945 points. Told you. Oh, my gosh, bro. I'm Told sorry. T- I, I'm sorry, y'all. And y'all probably going to kill me in the comment <laughs> section. A podcast, podcast land is probably going to kill your boy, and I'm probably going to get hella tweets. We can't let T-Mac in, bro. We can't let T-Mac in, bro. We can't. I'm sorry. Joe Johnson has seven years with Atlanta. Wait a minute. Let me go back. Hold on. Give me a minute, y'all. Seven years with Atlanta, he averaged 20. Four years with Brooklyn, he averaged 14. Four years with Phoenix, he averaged 14. One season with Utah, he averaged eight. Another season... With Boston, he averaged six, and one season in Miami, he averaged thirteen. We can't let him in, bro. I'm sorry, and I like T Mac. I'm sorry, T Mac. This this kind of proves to me, Spade, that the NBA Hall of Fame, the Nate Smith Hall of Fame, not NBA, the Nate Smith Hall of Fame, is a popularity contest. Cause with what we're saying, uh, Joe Johnson is a Hall of Fame if T Mac won. And well, let me give you some more stuff to help you feel more more conflicted. T Mac was a seven time NBA All Star. Well, know how many Joe Johnson been to? No, Spade. No, seven. Oh seven. my gosh! It, it, it's getting worse. The same. Well, for what it's worth, All Star games are popularity contests. So maybe you want to do like uh, All NBA. No, that's you the got, case. I know you got numbers. Yeah, I got numbers. Uh, <laughs> Twice, T-Mac was a first-team All-NBA, and three times he was a second-team. Two times he was a third-team. So what is that? Basically seven times he was All-NBA. You're going to feel good about this. Joe Johnson was All-NBA only once, and that was third-team. Never first or second. You feel better? I don't know because I don't know if – I don't. T Mac started a little earlier. Like Joe Johnson had to go against guys like LeBron and them. Mello. Oh, and, and T Mac came straight out of high school. Don't leave that and, out. Yeah, T-Mac man. T Mac came straight out of high school. Like you, it's hard to make them first, second teams when Mello and Bron and oh, Wade and all those guys came out that, around that time. Uh, well, here, all right, all right. This is gonna help you right here. T Mac came out in the nineties, if I'm not mistaken, right? I want to say ninety seven. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, ninety seven. Yeah, man. Joe, Joe, Joe started his career look like in what two two oh one oh one. So here you go. T Mac was two times. Twice he was an NBA scoring champ. Joe Johnson can't ever say that. Can't ever say that. Okay, uh, okay. Joe Johnson still scored more points than the guy. Yeah, well, I mean, he, I, he I don't lasted know, longer. He don't have the injuries. But that's what I I'm saying, know, like, man. For the people listening, make sure y'all understand the debate is not what... We're not saying, is Joe Johnson better than T-Mac? Like, that's an asinine question. We wouldn't even sit here and, and ponder that. But based off the numbers, if T-Mac gets in, should Joe Johnson get in? That's the question. I mean, that's the question. That's the question. I don't know. What else we got, bro? We, Before, that's oh, my last one? point on this, babe. Before this was okay. brought to my attention, if somebody said, yo... Somebody asked me without looking at all this before the homie done ruined me and implanted that battery in my brain. Somebody said, yo, T-Mac a Hall of Famer to you? I'd have been like, hell yeah, that's T-Mac. Hell yeah. But I don't know, man. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know. I don't know. But if somebody telling me Joe Johnson got to get in because T-Mac in, then I'm sorry, T-Mac. You got to go, B. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Mm. All right. What else we got? Spade, let's take it to Portland, yo. You know, Portland... Portland kind of been on the tear. 
They, they done chased down Denver, got the AFC so far. It still ain't over yet. Denver can still pass them. But Yusef Nurkic mm-hmm. been going. He's been an animal. He's been a beast. But Averaging double Yusef seven, Nurkic uh, has a went double down, double. fractured his leg, out for two weeks. Babe, how mm-hmm. do we feel about Nurkic being out two weeks? I think it's karma. And I hate to say that, man, but... The injury came like the very next game after he wished the Denver Nuggets a good summer. Right? Wasn't it the next game? Yep. That's that's instantly what I thought of. He said, you know, I wanted to we wanted to make the playoffs over here and we're gonna make the playoffs and I wish those guys a good summer. And I was like, ooh. And the next thing you know, ah, uh, he's hurt. I mean, I like the guy. You know I like him. I was saying that I felt like him and him and Joker had similar game. I know Joker's mm-hmm. an amazing passer before y'all tell me that. People always say that. But I feel like they got similar game. Nurkic is only 22 years old, so it's not like a situation where you say, you know, you're going with Jokic because he's got more youth or, or more upside. Mm-hmm. Neither one of these players have even peaked yet. They both young studs to me. Um, if I'm not mistaken, man, when Nurkic, in the time since he's been on the Trailblazers, he was averaging something like, 16 and 10 or 18 and 10. He was definitely averaging a double double. I know I saw that. And mm. it's it's pretty messed up that the dude got injured, man. They saying they only expect in two weeks, which is weird. But hey, hopefully they can hold it together until he gets back. I think he's definitely an asset to this team. I was gonna say it's definitely going it's definitely gonna come down to the young dude. I mean, you know, the young studs on Portland, CJ McCollum, Dame Lillard, they're gonna have to really step it up now. Because yeah. Nurkic has been a beast. When, with a capital beast. Like, the mm-hmm. whole word capital. That's how great this dude has been since they traded yeah, yeah. for him. A lot of people say, a lot of people say that Portland got the better of the deal that they traded to get him. Because he's been such an animal. Like, he's been such a beast. Been you know, D- Denver said that they tried to make it work. They tried to play him together. It didn't work. So, one of them had to go. And they chose to get, you know, they, you know, they chose to get rid of. Nurkic, I like both dudes. I think both dudes will be something to watch in the you know you know the coming upcoming future. Mm-hmm. But Nurkic gotta he gotta stay healthy, man. Definitely. If I'm gonna say this, if Nurkic was healthy, no, I I don't have the Blazers beating the Warriors, but the Warriors are kind of light in the middle. And if you add a big dude like Nurkic, along with Dame Lillard, who always gets up to play against Curry, I, I think the Blazers can make a game out of it. I'm not saying they'll win that series. I think because I, I think it's tough for any team to beat the Cavs and the Warriors in a seven-game series. But I definitely right. think with Nurkic in the middle, they can compete better than without him. Oh, absolutely. Let me say that. Absolutely. Let me say that. That's factual. But... It it, it, su- it sucks, man. It sucks. It sucks. Nurkic Nurkin also has some Nurkin type of injury Joker last them my dudes, man. I like them dudes, babe. Go yeah, ahead. man. I was saying Nurkic also had some type of injury last season. So, yeah, you know, you got to make sure you can keep this kid on the court. Word. Damn, I, hate, I hate that, man, because I like the guy. Anyway, you was just talking about how difficult it is to beat either Golden State or Cleveland in a best of seven series because of the yeah. talent this team got, man. And seeing them night in and night out gives them a lot of opportunities to figure out what you like to do and take it away from you. That being said, Cleveland has been one of the worst teams in the league this last month. They look terrible. Matter of fact, to give you a little piece of, of knowledge to hold on to, the Philadelphia 76ers had a better month record than the Cleveland Cavaliers. If you just think about that, that nothing in my mind can make that seem right. And I feel like just gonna everybody. Slander, you're just going to slander the Sixers. <laughs> I mean, the Sixers still over there trusting the process, man. They got two young studs in street clothes as we speak. But... It kind of got me wondering, man. Everybody is assuming when it's go time, the entire Cleveland Cavalier team going to flip the switch on and they going to look like the best team. And I I, I want to ask you this. Are the Cavs cruising to the playoffs or are they just in a rut? Are they really in a rut or is this a smoke screen? Your opinion. Uh, let me start off by saying I still think it would be tough for anybody to beat the Cavs in the seven-game series. Oh, Not because I think the Cavs got all this talent. It's because they got LeBron. <laughs> right. And they got LeBron James. And I think wherever LeBron go in the East, 
LeBron will be in the finals. Let me just start off by saying that. Okay. Now, as far as them, I think I think they're in a the struggle juice, babe. I ain't going to front. Too. I don't think they're cruising. I think they're in a the struggle juice. And you you could say, you could say I think they're cruising, but defensively, they have been so trash defensively. Like, you could say, oh, they're missing shots. They're not hitting their shots. JR coming back from injury. Kyle Corvus has been out. Iman Shepard has been out. Kevin Love is on minute restriction. Yeah, I, I get it. But the defense, defensively, they have been trash. Oh, agreed. Trash, man. And, and I don't think, I don't think defensively, you, you throwing deep. I don't think you're throwing defense and cruise control. I don't think. I, Spade, like I said, I still see them in the finals. I still got them in the finals because I just don't. I don't think anybody can beat LeBron in, in seven games, four out of seven. I don't. I don't see. Not in the I don't East. See you saying? Not in the East. Not in the East. Right. I'm talking in the East. Right. We're only talking East. I don't see nobody beating LeBron four times out of seven. Because LeBron LeBron is just that dude. But they've been trash. And I'm going to tell you what. They better get it together. Because you got teams out there that's like, you know what? Hey, the biggest thing a team can get is confidence. Absolutely. You, they start building confidence and think, you know what? The Cavs ain't the big bad bullies no more. <laughs> they, they turn into... The, Ivan Drago, if he dies, he dies. Like, they don't care. Like, that's what they turn into. So, you don't want to give these other teams in the East confidence. LeBron better get, put the pedal to the metal and make a statement in this last week. But knowing the Cavs, they might sit LeBron out maybe two or, the, two or three of these last couple of games they got and just go in there being a second seed and maybe flip the switch in the playoffs. But I, I, I don't think they're cruising. I think they're in the struggle juice. I agree. They're struggling. I, I agree 100%. And I'm going to take it a step further. Um, okay. I, I like the Cavs to still make it to the finals, struggle or not. But okay. I'm going to tell you what is what should be important to Cavalier fans as well as the players for the Cavaliers. That road to the finals is just as important as getting to the finals. If you get to the finals yep. but you don't fall and clawed and, and all you – man – one of the reasons why I think the Cavaliers was able to come back from a 3-1 deficit to beat Golden State last year wasn't just because Draymond was kicking folks in the gonads. I'm sure that didn't hurt. But they had such an easy road. Keep in mind, in the three previous rounds on their way to the finals, they swept. Two rounds, they swept. That's time at home. That's resting. That's studying film. That's family time. Whatever you want to call it, however cheesy you think it might be to see your family in the middle of all this. I'm one of the weird guys. I believe the biggest ingredient is in success is having somebody that believe in you. So even if it's that day, they get a chance to go to the house and let your lady say, hey, you can do this, whatever. Whatever it might be, I see it as being important. Mm -hmm. If this road right here is six-game series, seven-game series, six-game series, and then you got Golden State over there, I don't think that bodes well for Cleveland. I don't think it bodes well yeah, for them at all. I agree with you 100%. We want to know how you guys feel. Maybe you're a Cleveland fan. Maybe you're not a Cleveland fan. Maybe you're just a, a basketball guy. You're like, man, the Cavs ain't serious right now. It's the end of the season. They just all trying to make it to the playoffs healthy. Because I heard people tell me that. Maybe you guys agree. Let us know in the comment section down below. Spell, you ready to move yes, on? Yes, sir. Take it to the NFL where I want to be. Be in the NFL. Yeah, man. Ain't nothing Spade, happened in on the last. Hey, let me talk. Okay. We, we talked about it last week. Okay. We talked about it last week. It was some speculation that Beast Mode may join the Oakland Raiders because Oakland put together this plan to keep the Raiders in Oakland. Well, guess what the owners did this past week? They, they voted. Raiders going to Vegas. We're going to have the Las Vegas Raiders, babe. How do we feel about the Raider? Raider Nation, the black hole. Packing his bag, packing his hole, and moving the black hole, moving the whole hole <laughs> to Las Vegas. Uh, they moving the hole to Vegas. From, from just a fan of sports, I, I don't have an issue with it. We've seen teams leave cities before. Um, well, you know, everybody's... I saw somebody even tweet, today is the worst day of my life. And I didn't tweet back to that person because I didn't know him, but I tweeted in general and said, if the worst day of your life is your favorite team leaving your city... You ain't got much to complain about, guy. You've had a great life. If that's the worst thing that can happen Good to you. Life. You still got cable. The Raiders going to be on TV every day. You know what I'm saying? It's not that big a deal. For the people that's really concerned about the gambling, I'm, I'm so shocked that so many people still saying, oh, man, it's, it's gambling and, 
and you know prostitution man we talking about millionaires if you don't think they can call in something to vegas i don't know where you've been if you don't think they can call they, some booty to the house i don't know where you've been like none of this stuff they, wasn't obtainable before vegas bro what's wrong with them Spade. what's wrong with them <laughs> they don't even gotta be in vegas baby <laughs> right <laughs> they could be man they could be playing ball in saskatchewan it don't yeah. matter Things will get flown in, whether it's drugs, gambling. I mean, you don't need to go to Vegas to gamble. Right. You can gamble on the internet. And bookies no got you cell phones. <laughs> you can call in Come place on, of that from your house. Like it, being that on. And if you ch- if you don't think these dudes is flying chicks out, man, we seen. God, hey, he my dude, Spade. We we got a we got a good appreciation for Marco Bellinelli. Oh, Marco right. Marco Bellinelli will slide in them DMs. Yeah. And be like, baby, I just won an I just won an NBA championship. Yep. What's up? Like if you don't think Marco dudes is doing that to these chicks and flying these chicks to wherever they at, that that excuse is just asinine to me. It don't make any it's sense. Stupid. It don't make any sense. It's stupid. But speak. Yeah, that's dumb. As far as as far uh, Draymond Green says something. He said, moving the Raiders is like moving Green Bay or the Cowboys. I agree with that, man. I, whether the Raiders was in oh, I mean, the Raiders was known to be moving, but they would stay in that same region. Right. Whether it's L.A. or Oakland or L.A. back to a- Oakland, that's what they do. Right. But, hey, after doing a little bit of research, you know, the Raiders was, was, was talking about maybe going back to L.A. But they said that with the Raiders moving from Oakland to Las Vegas, that that makes the Raiders closer. That makes the Raiders closer to LA, so they could potentially draw in more fans than they had in Oakland, which is crazy. Which is just crazy. Makes them so, closer to LA. What you mean? Yes, yeah, like as far as mile, like mileage from LA to Oakland is further than from LA to Las Vegas. Wow. As far as mileage. Wow. Now, that, you see what I'm saying? That's news to me. Wow! Yeah, I, I, I did some research, bro. I did research, but that's that's what that's what they're saying. So it's for, it, it takes longer to get from LA to Oakland than it does to get from LA to Las so Vegas. What the hell so it's cool, they're closer. That's what I'm saying. So they, uh, I guess, LA people are still going to be able to go to Raider games in LA because it's closer than Oakland. But as far as Oakland, it sucks, man. You know, you you want the Raiders to still at least be in that region, but. Teams got to do what's best for them. They wanted a new stadium. They couldn't work that out. I mean, you can't still have the Raiders playing in the damn Coliseum, man. Come on. I, I thought they liked having the baseball field through the middle of the field, and you try to cut on part Come of the on, baseball like, diamond in the dirt and slip and fall down. I thought that was that was nostalgic. That's what they like. That's what made the Raiders the Raiders. Slipping I, I on the baseball I want to say this too, Spade. It, it, I want to say this too. Looking at the Raiders, it looks like they definitely have an up hour. They got a nice young quarterback. Mm-hmm. I think they still need to get a running back. They, they still do. need to get a running back. But they got studs at wide receiver mm-hmm. with uh, Crabtree and, and Cooper. Yep. Um, they got to get better, like, in the secondary defensively. They need to hit her. But, I mean, Khalil Mack and those guys are studs. Mm-hmm. I think the Raiders have an up hour. This move could be good. It could be good. Yeah. Could be. Could be. We'll Time see. to tell. We'll see. You ready for uh, We bring it back an old segment, y'all. LaParis, you ready? Yeah, let's get it. If we was segment. a rock and roll band, bro, this is your solo. Like this is yeah. this is the the point of the show when all eyes are on you, my friend. We call this segment yeah. or ain't it. it. This is where I gather a group of names and I ask LaPaz, look, man, is this guy just going through a little wreck, but is he still really that guy? Or what okay. we just what we led astray all along? Is this guy ain't it? That didn't really sound yeah. right, but y'all get it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they get it. Let's get into it. It ain't it, LaParis. All of these guys are basketball players. Before you go, Spade. Okay, what you got? I want, I want the subscribers. I want the loyal supporters to play too. Leave okay. it in the comment section. It ain't it to the name Spade. Give us go, Spade. So you want to share your solo? Yeah, man. Wow, you got a big heart. Yeah, man. I, I don't know where I find you know another guy like you. Anyway, check this out. We're going to start off in L.A., man. This kid okay. right here was compared to Kevin Durant. They actually compared this kid to Kevin Durant. Haven't seen it yet, man. Brandon Ingram. It or ain't it? Spade. I want to say this. Brandon Ingram has been playing better. Okay. But when you come out the gate 
and say, KD, you done put the you done put the you done put the bug in me. I when I look at this dude, I'm expecting KD things. And and I'll, I'm not talking about KD things now. I'm talking about rookie KD, rookie KD type of things. True. Wait, I'm looking at Brandon Ingram. I don't see KD. I want to say right now at this moment, Brandon Ingram ain't it. He ain't it, babe. Woo. Okay, let's Brandon keep it. Ingram Ooh. ain't it. Let's go on. Oh, with babe, else. we gonna answer. Hold nah, up, this bro. show solo. Hold up, bro. You, you want me to step answer, up? You want bro. me to get my guitar too? That's right. Okay. Brandon uh, Ingram, babe. Oh man, I want this kid <laughs> right now. No, I, I mean this ain't this. I'm not throwing the book away after this, but right now, right now today, yeah, we talking right now, it. bro. He ain't it, not right now. Okay, okay. I did not know I was gonna be playing in this solo. Yeah, I ain't read the sheet music enough. This strong arm sports, baby. Yeah, I see. I'm strong arm in it, baby. I see. <laughs> Let's go to Philadelphia like, nah, for number two, bro. He was so off guard. He was like, ah. <laughs> I really was. <laughs> Jaleel Okafor, man. It ain't oh, it. come on. I mean, anybody know me, know how I feel about Jaleel Okafor. And Jaleel Okafor remind me of Eddie Curry. And I know somebody going to be like, Eddie Curry had a 2010 season. I don't care. Jaleel Okafor ain't it. J- get Jaleel out of here. It was rumors that the Bulls was trying to trade for Jaleel Okafor. And I was like, no, I don't want Eddie Curry 2.0. Jaleel Okafor ain't it. Spade, Jaleel Okafor. I think if you put Jaleel in the right system, he could be it. I think what Jaleel, I, look, I think what Jaleel got talent. What situation play defense? I was going to say, it's just strange to see a big that don't play defense. But if you put him on a team like, I know they don't need him. I'm just, just walk with me. You put him on a team like the Grizzlies, who's known for having that tough, hard-nosed defense. I, I don't know if, if the people around him could raise this defensive level. I, I don't know. I, I think I think Okafor could possibly be it. Can I Can I push? Hell nah. It I ain't it, Spade. I guess I got to say he it, bro. I, I think he might be it. What? Hey. Wow. I ain't even want to play this damn song. You gave me a good time. <laughs> Don't get mad when I Let's hit the wrong it. keys. All right. Wow. We're going to go to college for this one, but we're going back over to L.A. I want to talk about the much talked about college freshman Lonzo Ball, bro. This kid did get his team to the tourney, unlike last year's first overall draft pick, who we still haven't seen. Just saying. And then he fell to a, a good team. A lot of folks felt like he got outplayed in that game. Lonzo Ball, Paris, it ain't it. People was killing this kid. People was killing this kid because he had that bad game. I chalk it up as a bad game. I think Lonzo Ball is it. Now, if he was asking about his pops, his pops ain't it. As far as playing basketball, he played he play basketball like a middle linebacker or a pulling guard. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's who he played basketball like. So his pops ain't it. As far as Lonzo, Lonzo, it. I think the kid gonna be a problem in the league. I think he it. You think Spade. he it? Yeah, he it. He it. Nah, he it. I know he, he it. it, and I know Lavar it too. Give me both. Matter of fact, I will buy in on the billion dollar deal. Give me all the balls. Give me Lonzo. Give me Lamelo. <laughs> give me Jello, and give me Lavar. Give me all of them. I'm in on all of them, man. I'm a ball Stop. fan. Stop. They it. Stop. All it. y'all it. You know. You know them other two are questionable, Spade. I saw uh, I saw Jello's highlight tape, and it was like him passing to Lamelo. I was a little concerned about that. I was a little concerned, <laughs> but yeah, you give me give me all of questionable. I'm in on them. Let's get it. All right, man. This one right here. This guy right here just had a chance to do me a solid. Matter of fact, let me look in the camera when I say this. I needed you to do me a solid, Dennis. Get them bombs. Get Chicago up out of here. Do me a solid. And what you do? You kind of choked at the end of the game. I'm talking about. Atlanta Hawk point guard Dennis Schroeder. LaPaz, Dennis Schroeder, it or ain't it? They they moved T because they thought, thought he was Schroeder, it. They thought he was it. And I want to say, you know what? Millsap has been out. <laughs> Millsap has been out. These guys, Bazemore was out. Bazemore's back now. These guys had a lot of issues. I've seen at one point this past, I think it was the past two weeks, the Hawks lost seven games in a row. Mm-hmm. But you know who was cooking? Who? Dennis Schroeder. Mm. Dennis Schroeder is it. Mm. Dennis Schroeder it. Mm. I like Schroeder, bro, Spade. Mm. I like Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder it. Spade. Dennis Schroeder. I, I'm a little salty right now, man. Before this season started, started, I prophesied that Chicago Bulls would not make the playoffs. It was a very... I think we I think we seventh, bro. We seventh right the now, Paris, bro. I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> it's a very controversial and, and it's tough being able to see into the future. It's a tough burden to carry. 
lot of times when you tell people the future, they can't deal with it. They're not ready to deal with it because they're not there yet. Dennis Schroeder had the opportunity to make me look like the genius that I know I am. And what did he do? He pissed the bed. So for that, Dennis Schroeder ain't it. He ain't it. He over there fussing with Dwight and leaving people wide open for the three during the game. Who was that game against? That was Golden State, right? I think he gave Steph a wide open three because he was fussing with Dwight Howard or something. <laughs> Spade. Nah. So you said Dennis Schroeder ain't it. Yes. That's what I said. Okay. We got any more names? Oh, yeah. I was so mad about Dennis. I was done. All right. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Man, Dennis just messed up my day, bro. Dennis, take care of work. Take care of work, bro. This next name, man, we talked about this guy earlier in the show, man. I'm talking about Yusef Nurkat. This guy, it? Come on, man. Or is he injury prone? Right, though. But if he ain't on the court, he can't be it. Man. Okay. Man, Nurkat, it. Okay. No. Two injuries Nurk in two it. seasons. That's okay. That's okay. And you want to know what? <laughs> That dude is, man. I, you know, he could be on my team right now. Injured Nurkit could be on my team right now. Give me Nurkit. He it. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to kind of... I'm going to follow suit. Babe. I'm going to follow suit. Oh, okay. I, nah, I'm going to follow suit. Okay. I was going to take a I was gonna take a stab at Nurkit because I still think they're the same person. But anyway, this guy is definitely... <laughs> he's a stud player. He proved it. He was averaging... Over 10 points and over 10 boards a game in his stint with Portland. All he needed was an opportunity to shine. He is it. But you know what I want to do yeah. on this next one? Let's go back in history. Let's go back. I want to ask you about okay. your old favorite point guard in the whole wide world. Who? I'm talking about none other than Derrick Rose. The truth. The man hey, who carried on, Chicago on his back for years. Don't do this, bro. What you mean? Don't do this, bro. Bro, don't the man this, bro. just... Got hurt again, for those that don't know. Got a meniscus tear. That's in his knee, for those that don't know. The knee that he already done hurt several times before, for those that don't know. LaParis, is he it? Or is he ain't it? And I know that don't sound right. Spade, don't do this, bro. Why? Because you know Dead Rose ain't it. He ain't been in for three years. I've been telling you, Trey D. Rose, when he still has some mm. clout, get D. Rose out. We should have been got D. Rose out of there. Mm. Spay, you know he ain't it. Why you do this? Mm. I know people going to be mad in the comment section. D. Rose just got to get hurt again, towards their meniscus again. I, I foreshadowed this. People told me, oh, I'm hating because I'm not from Chicago. I synced it. I synced it. I knew oh, Derrick Rose. I seen, the, I seen the arrow. Yeah, I seen it. De De I'm sorry. Derrick Rose was amazing for like two or two years. He was amazing for like two years. He was the, probably up there, top three players in the league. Derrick Rose was amazing. The injuries killed him. Derrick Rose said some things that, that shook, you know, it poked me the wrong way, man. Oh, I got to so be able personal. to walk with my kids so it's personal. type of things. So it ain't personal. It sound personal, I, bro. I'm, I'm a Bulls fan. Everybody know me. I'm a Bulls fan. I'm a Bulls fan, and I'm thinking about the damn team. Now, when Dad, when Dad Rose wasn't thinking about those situations, Dad Rose, I, 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 Spade, I quite, let me say this, and then I'm gonna let you go. I question whether Dad, whether or not Dad Rose want to play basketball, or if he's just playing basketball for the money. And when I say, I know everybody's playing for the money. I know that, but I'm saying I don't know if Derrick Rose like, yo, you know, some people be like, yo, I want to play basketball and get money. I think Derrick Rose wake up like, fuck, I got to go to work, but these checks, mm -hmm. I think Derrick Rose wake up like a regular dude that got a nine a damn five, but no, I got to get this money. I think that's incredibly unfair. I think okay. it is in That's cool. I, qu I question whether or not that dude want to play basketball, Spade. Okay. De Derrick Rose, Spade, it ain't it. Well, hold up. You know me. I can't just give an easy answer like that. I mean, mine wasn't that easy. Nah, it sounded pretty easy. You you was pretty quick on the damn trigger. <laughs> now I'm finna make you look crazy right here in front of the entire world. You ready for this? Now it's time for Reggie to karate size your ass. Let's get into it. <laughs> you just told me a man that averaged 18 points a game, 4.4 assists, Four rebounds with a 17.02 PER ain't it. Right after you just told me that a guy that averaged 18 points a game, six assists, three rebounds with a 16.36 PER is it? Ain't no way Dennis Schroeder broke ass it and then 
Uh, Derrick Rose, <laughs> ain't it? Ain't no way. So if Dennis Schroeder Bro, it, he better grab Derrick Rose's hand and walk the, him over to the it bubble. They better go as a team. Derrick Rose is still it. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with you and the rest of these the fans. The ability is availability, he, bro. He ain't MVP, Rose. That don't mean he ain't it. He got to be He got to be available, bro. He's available. The season's over. Hurt. Where the Knicks going? The Knicks got like five more games to go back to the house. He's just getting ahead. He's just beating track. Wait, Derrick Rose said he wanted Max. You paying Rose a Max? Don't try to change the topic. This ain't about that. I'm asking you a question. This ain't about that. I, I, you said it. You already said it yet. I'm asking you another question. Nah, I need you, you to concede that I'm, that I'm right. Nah, oh, hell to the nah. Okay. Spade, I'm asking you another question. Dad Rose said This ain't that segment. This is it, I ain't it, sir. And I'm tired of you just thinking you can do what you want to do up in here. You can't just do what you want to do. I just I just Spade, karateized your name, ass bro. up in here. Any, any, any other names, Spade? Uh, yeah. Let's talk about one more rookie. Then I promise we're done with this segment. Dario Sarr. A lot of people feel like this guy's the front runner for rookie of the year. 76 a player. What you think? It, I ain't it. Sorry, is it. He it. They just had to get them other people out the way. Noel and Ilya Sova, Sarek. Once, once those dudes move, they got Sarek in there. He's been playing great. He it, Spade. Got a bright future. Okay. I'll take your word for what? it. I mean, Spade, go. Nah, I'll go. take your word Sarek. for it. It ain't it. I'll take your word for it. Huh? I'll take your word for it. Because I can't nah, say he ain't it if like I say Okra for it. You don't like Sarek. I mean, I can't say he ain't it if I say Okafor is. I technically don't feel like Okafor is it. But I just feel like he ain't, he ain't in the right system, man. That's what Okafor I feel ain't like. ain't it, bro. Ain't it. You ready to move on? Yes, I am. Tell him what this next segment Let's calls, leave. bro. You, oh, Lord. What's the name of this next segment? <laughs> I want you guys to leave, leave your thoughts on it ain't it in the comment section. Let us know. If these dudes are it or ain't it, leave it in the comment section down below. The next segment is the Pick'em Game. Uh-uh. I now have changed boy, the name of this segment. Is... No, no. Your I, boy? Uh-uh. I have changed the name of this segment. It is called no K way. Spades Pick'em. When you win some more, we'll change the name back. I run this segment. Now, I have been the Cleveland Cavaliers. I have been in cruise control. Oh, my goodness. I ain't really trying. I ain't really trying. Spade been picking some trash games. I just been trying to catch up, Spade. I picked one. So, I've been going games. against my... I've been going against what, what I would normally do to try to catch up to my copy been my Cleveland favorite? Cavalier in it. Yeah. I've been Cleveland Cavalier in this fade. I got a good picking game for us this week. I got the NCAA National Championship. That is none other than Gonzaga, a one seed versus North Carolina, another one seed. Yeah. Spade, I'm going first. Give me Carolina. Give me them hills. Wow, just like that? Just like that. Give me them hills. Even after they miss four. Free throws down the stretch. Yeah, give me the mails. Give me the mails. Even after they, Ain't they, gonna they be able to escape. Stop Meeks. They escape. Nobody gonna be able to stop Oregon? Meeks on the glass. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to rattle you a little bit. I like UNC too, cause you know why? I didn't even fill out a bracket this year. A lot of people was asking us to do a a bracket a bracket challenge. Golly, why can't I say bracket, bracket challenge? <laughs> He said Brackham. Yeah, let's call it that. A Brackham challenge over here on this channel. And we decided not right. to because neither of us felt like we had seen enough. I just said not seen enough right. this year. But you know what you don't do? Uh, let me take that back. You know what you do when you don't have all the research? You copy the paper of a smart person. And President Barack Obama chose the Tar Heels on his bracket to come all the way out. So I'm going to copy President Obama. See, this is what I do. When the parents don't have the answer, he wing it. And I'm the nerd of the class sitting right beside him getting straight A's. Why are you going to sit beside me and fell out of class I'm getting straight A's in? That just don't make no sense. Because I, I done seen them D papers. Yeah, that Everybody, was the old me. I turned my life around. Clock. You sitting a over there, fella. I got straight A's. I got one test right here I didn't study for. President Barack you Obama sitting beside off, me. You cheating he wrote, the Asian next to you. That's right. He wrote I UNC. Mean, I'm writing UNC. I'm getting an A in this class, baby. And this ain't going to help you catch up at all. You're still going to be five games behind in the segment but called K-Space I, I told Pickle. you I was Cleveland cavalier in it. I'm off that now. I'm only picking winners. Ride with your boy, y'all. Oh, wow. I'm only picking winners. <laughs> this, I think this will keep you up for, I think you're really up three. I think Check I'm up tape. five. Check the tapes, man. I think you only, you ain't up no five. That's what I think. You only up four, I think three. Check the wow. tape. Wow. Check the tape. Let's move on, bro. Let's go. Wait, wait, wait. Before I move, before we move on, I want to say 
leave, leave who you guys have in the national championship. I know it got to be some Gonzaga fans out there because the whole damn crowd had on Gonzaga gear. So I know some of y'all out there, which is crazy because I've never heard anybody talk about Gonzaga ever. Only person I ever heard talk about Gonzaga was John damn Stockton and, <laughs> and his son. That was it. I ain't never heard nobody else talk about Gonzaga. Oh Not everybody goodness. Gonzaga fans. Go ahead, Spade. All right. The last segment of the show, man, we call this the Strong Arm Performer of the Week. It's a very prestigious True. award given out in podcast land. We give away two a week to the male or female who raised his or her level of play to ensure that their team got the victory. LaParis, you on the hot seat. Who is your strong arm performer of this week and why, sir? It was it was easy for me this week, bro. Oh, Lord. That scares me. It, it was easy. I'm giving it to Morgan William of Mississippi State. She played 44 minutes, 13.6 dimes, three boards, three steals, and hit the game winner. Versus the, versus the juggernaut known as the UConn Huskies, the women team that was on a 100-plus game win streak. She hit, she put the nail in the coffin and hit the dagger to end their streak, not put them into the championship, and led Mississippi State to the championship. And a little bit of that Dak Prescott then rubbed off on old girl, oh. and, she, and she clutched. And she clutched. That's Morgan why. William, you are my strong arm performer of the week. Morgan, do your thing, girl. Oh, your thing, girl. that's why. Do your thing, girl. Oh. Do your thing, girl. Strong on performer of the week, girl. Okay, okay. Wait. I'm going to do something. First of all, what I want to do is give you a round of applause for choosing a female. Did you choose a female? Wait, what are you talking about? I choose this female This is Strong time. Arm Sports history. If you're watching this show or listening to the show, that's you got a true. chance to see History. The Paris has never given an accolade to a female athlete ever. That's not true. I gave it to Serena numerous times. I gave it to Sharapova. I gave it to some. I gave it to females. I, I gave it to Kate Champion for being so damn fine. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Carrie. Getting, getting accused of dope. Hey, Carrie. I want to give I mine get, to Kennedy Lee. It was so many deserving NBA players, but let's give it to the amateurs. I'm doing air quotes. Amateurs, because that's what they call them to keep from paying them. Kennedy Meeks, 25 <laughs> points against Oregon, but most importantly was that that rebound off the missed free throw, the tip, or whatever you want to call it, to keep those right. guys alive. Uh, Carolina really didn't play well in that game, they but did. they got the dub, and I don't think you're going to see them come out that flat again. I hope not. But, yeah, man, for that performance, Kennedy... You are my strong one performer of the week. You know me, man. I get these awards to whoever deserves it. You know, big, small, male, female, black, white. Hey, I, I, I just like good performances. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm I about. Agree. You agree? I agree. What? I gave it. I gave it to Carrie Champion too. Hey, Carrie. Oh, hey, Carrie. Spade. Let me check with the PR he was department. A beast, though. Meeks was definitely a beast. Right. If I'm not mistaken, I think he had eight offensive rebounds. Yeah, man. Dude was beast. And they and I, I heard somebody say that UNC they practice tipping that that rebound out on the free throw. And everybody know for the team not shooting the free throw, that is considered the easiest rebound in basketball. And um, twice they had an opportunity to box out and probably get another chance to win that game, and they couldn't get it done. Sorry, I'm y'all. probably going to butcher this old this old coaching saying. But proper preparation prevent poor performance. Ooh, that's pretty good. I bro. said it right. Yeah, I, 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 I said ain't it even right. Try. Yeah, proper preparation prevent poor, poor performance. And so they them dudes, try it again too. Okay, go ahead. Them dudes, they prepared for that situation and it worked out, man, because they prepared. So I want to say I can't wait to the national championship. That game is tomorrow. We picked that game. Interested to know what you guys think about all the topics we talked about today. Babe, before I close the show, you got anything else to add? I just want to let people know that. When the world look at you in your eyes and tell you you can't do it, you can. Because LaParis told right. me I couldn't dominate the picking game. And I do. Week I after never week said, bro, after if week. anybody hey. believe in you, it's me. I know, but let me but talk. I'm the talking date. to the, I'm trying to be positive. I want to be inspirational right now and give an inspirational Babe, speech. Can I, I do any, that? And I'm, and I'm being positive right back. If anybody believe in you, as well as the people that listen to our podcast, it's me. You guys can achieve it. If you can dream it, you can achieve That's it. That's right. Damn it. The, the motto for this week is, yes, you can. <laughs> All right, <laughs> go ahead. I just wanted to be inspirational. Listen, man. 
As usual, we want to thank you guys for your continued support. We want to thank y'all for tuning in to Strong On Sports. As usual, if you guys... Wait, wait, wait. If you guys are here on YouTube, bang the subscribe button. It takes two seconds. If you're a regular here, hit the like button. It takes two seconds, y'all. Just bang. Before you leave, just hit it. Bang. Matter of fact, when you click on the when you click on the episode, just hit like and enjoy, sit back, relax, put your seat recliner, and enjoy. Right. But if you don't want to see two dudes arguing in the box, you don't want to see our mug shot, that's okay. We got all your podcasts everywhere, SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes, where you guys show mad love. I can't thank you guys for your team support. Spade, great show, homie. Yeah, we'll see these guys next episode. We out. Peace.